Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to talk about multi-threading. So this is again a very commonly asked topic in the interviews of HFTs and hedge funds and a lot of big tech companies. So and I have seen that uh, a lot of freshers and not just freshers but even experienced candidates either do not have a lot of experience in this particular domain in the domain of multi-threading or either their all the knowledge or information they have is either uh, incorrect or it is only partial information or and they have a lot of misconceptions around this topic. So I'm here to actually bust all those misconceptions and provide you a very exhaustive view of how you can write multi-threaded programs not just multi-threaded programs but very highly performant multi-threaded programs and how multi-threading is basically used in the domains of ultra low latency or low latency softwares but anyways uh, another thing is that we will only focus on how to write multi-threaded programs in c++ because as i said that c++ is the most commonly used programming language in hfts but uh, all the principles or all the concepts which i will tell you are applicable to software designing and software engineering in general so uh, the concepts or the principles are not just specific to c++ they apply to the domain of multi-threading in general anyways let's jump into it so first let before jumping into the code let me actually clear a couple of misconceptions around the topic of multi-threading so one very common misconception is that if your program runs slow then multi-threading uh, will make it fast okay so the thing is that the actual thing is that if your program runs slow, then multi-threading is not always the answer to make it fast. I mean, if let's say you have a single-threaded program and it runs slow, I mean, it, it might be running slow due to many reasons. It has a very high latency and the reason behind that can be anything. But if you think that if you make that particular program a multi-threaded program, okay, and it will make your program fast, no, that is not going to happen. I mean, it multi-threading can make your program fast in some cases, can make it very, very responsive. Or it can make your program very slow as well. I mean, I have seen instances where a multi-threaded program runs a lot slower than a single-threaded program. I mean, there are a lot of reasons behind them, and like one of the common reason is that uh, whenever you do multi-threading, there are some inherent problems. Like one of them is context switching comes into picture. So, in case you do not understand what context switching is, so let me explain it to you. So, let's say you have only one core on which a thread T1 is running. Okay and let's say a three, thread t2 star comes in and it wants to run on core 1 so now cpu has to actually preempt thread t1 and save some information that information is actually called the context okay so save the context of thread t1 somewhere so that when thread t2 starts running and it is done running and thread t1 wants to run again basically it wants to resume running and again so cpu must know from which particular point at which particular point the thread t1 had left and it has it should start or it should resume it running from that particular point so it has to store all the context so that it can actually do that resume action so uh, the context can be like uh, or the information which is stored is like one of the information is program counter so program counter basically stores the address of the instruction which was being executed okay so we want to store the program counter because when thread t1 will get preempted thread 2 t2 will run and it's done and now thread t1 starts running so it will start running from that particular instruction only where it had left so that's why we want to store program counter we need to store the stack pointer in case you do not know stack pointer like these are these are usually taught in computer architecture you should review your notes okay i mean if i like start explaining each of these terms so it will this video will become pretty long but anyways stack pointer is stored then uh, the return addresses of functions and all those things are stored so that we, the CPU can actually resume running, running thread even from where it had left and then it has to do some extra work as well like as I said uh, thread even was running t2 comes in and it wants to run so CPU saved the context of thread t1 now CPU needs to see the context of thread t2 and need to resume it from that particular point and now when th thread t2 basically when thread t2 will be done again CPU will need to load the context of thread t1 so that thread t1 can run so you can see like uh, CPU spent some time in just doing this context switching okay at when it was doing context switching at that particular time moments it was not executing any instruction okay any instruction of your program so that time is wasted so that's why that those CPU cycles or those time which is wasted actually accounts to your program running slower than a single threaded program okay and there are an, uh, other uh, reasons as well I mean your cache might get polluted due to multi-threading programs okay and uh, like uh, if your program is highly cache coherent so 
sorry if like the locality of reference of a program is very high okay so that particular program runs very fast but usually the locality of reference of multi threading program multi threaded program can be uh, might not be that good as compared to single threaded program so that might be another reason and there are other reasons as well uh, but now the other misconception is that or uh, i won't say it is the it is a misconception but the thing to note basically is that multi threaded makes the behavior of your program unpredictable and uh, i will come back to it to explain what i basically mean by this sentence that the behavior of program becomes unpredictable but again just assume this for a moment and since your program or the behavior of a program becomes unpredictable multi threaded makes programs very hard to debug okay and another thing is that multi threading brings uh, some inherent problems like race condition deadlock starvation and those are also very hard to spot so let's jump into into some code so to create multi threaded programs in c++ or to create or instantiate threads so c++ provide this thread class which is actually in this thread header so if you want to use this thread class you need to hash include this thread header a uh, header file and we are basically interested in the constructor of std thread so std thread provides these four types of constructor but again we are interested in this third type so this third type is a templated constructor the first argument which it accepts is a callable and rest of its arguments are the parameters which are accepted by this callable okay in case uh, uh, by callable i mean that a callable can be anything like it can be a normal function or a method it can be a lambda function or it can be a uh, function object or a functor uh, so let's see some code and this will become clear how you basically how you should basically use this particular constructor so here i have a code and as i said i you need to hash include thread library and here is a function which we want to run in different threads so it's just a normal function it returns void and it accepts one argument which is of type integer and it just prints the value of that particular uh, argument so you can see here that here i have created one thread uh, and i'm using that particular constructor only like the first argument which it, it is accepting is this callable this function and the second and the rest of the arguments as i said are the parameters which this function accepts so this function accepts only one parameter which is of type integer so i have just passed it the value of this x is 1 and then there is 32 same this it accepts this callable function and the value of x is 2 so one thing to note is that the moment you instantiate this thread in c++ the std thread it starts running okay there is no uh, start or a run method which a thread class provides in c++ the moment you instantiate it, it will start running that particular callable or that this particular function will start running in that particular thread okay so what happens is that uh, here this int main function is running in a main thread now this line number 20 is executed this function fun will start running in a different thread t1 and main thread will keep on running in parallel now main thread comes to line number t21 and now this 32 will start running again sorry this function will start running again in this thread t2 so now there are three threads active at this moment and now main thread resumes and eventually we do t2.join t1.join so for now i won't explain what these join methods are uh, you can just assume that you need to do these joins before the thread is destroyed i will explain it later uh, in some other video but yeah so as i said that thread starts running as the moment it is instantiated so you can see that i already did a one run of the program and we see that value of x is 1 and value of x is 2 basically thread t1's uh, output is printed first and then thread t2 output is printed but let's run it again and now you see the thread t2 argument is printed first and then thread t1 is printed so you can see that in the initial run thread t1's argument thread t1's uh, string was printed first so that's what i meant by uh, when I said that multi-threaded program makes the behavior of the program unpre unpredictable. I mean, you can see the output is unpredictable. We do not know whether value of x equal to 2 will be printed first or value of x equal to 1 will be printed first. Like right now, the value of x equal to 2 is printed first. Let's do another run. And let's see. Again, it is value of x equal to 2 which is printed first. I mean, if you will keep on running this, you will see different behaviors. I mean, sometimes you will see that value of x equal to 1 is printed first. But anyways, uh, now you see that value of x equal to 1 is printed first so that's what i meant by when i said that multi-threaded program makes the behavior of a program unpredictable and let's try to add a bit more unpredictability here so let's try to make this string a bit longer and you will see that 
some weird things will start happening. So let me print the thread ID as well. So uh, so C++ has this std this thread get ID which actually prints the ID of the thread which is currently being executed. Okay, so if I do this and if I run this program, so so ideally what should have happened this whole line should be printed and then another line should be printed on the next line but you see something weird is happening because what is happening in the background that threads are getting interleaved as i said on one particular core this thread t1 was running then it was printed in between let's say the thread t1 only was able to print this much information thread id and it got printed and thread t2 started running on that particular core it thread t2 printed this much information thread id is equal to this and then it it my it got printed preempted now thread t1 came again into picture and it printed this value of x equal to 1 and then so you can see all sort of uh, these weird things can happen i mean all sort of these unpredictable things can happen in multi-threading now another problem with multi-threading programs is what we call race condition so in case you do not know what race condition is so uh, let me actually try to explain it uh let's try to create a sim sample program which has a race condition or let me show you this program only which i had already created so here this is a shared variable its value is thousand and you, uh, in 